Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jessica and I am a woman in long-term recovery. And on this channel, I make videos about uh, recovery, different pathways to recovery, substance use disorder, harm reduction, and all things in between. Hi, so welcome to my channel. And if you're not new here, welcome back you guys. Happy Friday. Friday the 13th, actually, if you get spooked out about stuff like that. I don't. Uh, I think it's just another day, but I saw a lot of stuff about it online this morning, so I thought I'd make mention of it. Anyway, I wanted to come on and talk to you guys today uh, about... Um, I don't really have a name for it like a title, I guess. And I've kind of, I talk about this a lot in a way. Sorry, I feel weird having lipstick on. Uh, so if I'm moving my mouth weird, that's why, because I feel weird having lipstick on. Anyway, um, I, I've been seeing a lot of people make videos about why being sober isn't important to them anymore. So I guess if I had to pick, that would be the topic of my video today. And the videos that I've seen, and I agree with them, and it kind of spurred me to make my video today. It's, it's not people saying that they're not sober anymore. It's people saying that we don't care about that word anymore. And the people that do care about that word, sober, people like me and the other creators that have made a video similar to this one, um, we're going to give that word back to you guys. You can have it because we don't care about it anymore. And the reason that we say this, my allergies are killing me, y'all. So if I sound all stopped up, that's what it is. My allergy medicine hasn't kicked in yet. Some days it doesn't work. I'm also allergic to my dog. One of the good things about recording on my phone is that I can move it. So, uh, let me see my cute dog. That is my puppy. That's Buddy. Hey, hi, Buddy. Ain't he cute? Oh my God, that was perfect. <laughs> anyway, back to what I was saying. Um, normally he's camera shy and won't get up. So that was friggin' perfect. Oh my God, he's my new best friend. Back to what I was saying before I get distracted more than what I already am. So, people were saying and making videos and talking on social media about how we don't care about being sober anymore. How we're kind of giving this word back to the recovery community because there's a lot of hate in the recovery community, unfortunately. Uh, and if you guys remember a couple of months back, I made my, I ain't nobody, I, um, uh, I came on and I made a video, I don't remember what video it was, is, whatever, but I talked about how I made a TikTok account, <laughs> and I laughed, you know, because I'm 40, 41, who's counting, um, uh, and that I felt a little old for making a TikTok account, but how I was surprised and surprised in a good way about how big of a recovery community there was on TikTok. And at first it was great. God, it was great. And I was like, you know, I'm really glad that I made this TikTok account because there's a lot of support here. It's a way for me to spread my message. Uh, you know, one of the biggest things that I one of the biggest reasons why I am on multiple social media platforms, why I have this channel, is to spread my message about Narcan. And so if me telling my story about my, um, my struggle with addiction, my struggle with my mental health, my struggle with, you know, what happened to me in my childhood, etc., helps somebody, then I'm all for it. I don't mind sharing. But, um... I was really happy to find such a loving place on TikTok and because I haven't had the greatest experience with 
and the recovery community. Me personally. This is me speaking for me personally. And, you know, I've talked about it before. I have videos on my channel. You guys can go back and watch them that I've talked about my uh, experience with Narcotics Anonymous and why I don't go to those meetings anymore and etc. So, me personally, I haven't had the greatest experience within the recovery community. So, I came on TikTok. Oh, great. It's a great. It's a loving, supporting community, blah, blah, blah. Even if there's mixed recovery pathways here. And on the surface, it is. But, when you peel back the curtain, just like everything else, it's not. It's not. And, you know, it's always going to be this way because there's people involved. And that sucks. <laughs> but it's just the truth, you know. <clears throat> Anytime you involve people, we all have our own opinions. But we all have our own ways of doing things. And... We all feel like, or there's always going to be people that think their way is the right way and their right way is the only way. But here is my, here's my struggle with that and other people struggle with that from what I can gather because I'm seeing other recovery creators make videos similar to the one that I'm doing right now. When you try to fit people in a box, you're killing them. Plain and simple. And I'm not being over dramatic. Um, when you try to fit someone into a box with something that is life or death, like addiction is, and you tell them, you're not recovering the way that I do, so it's wrong. You're running the possibility of sending that person right back out into the arms of their addiction. And there's a lot to this, you know, because there's always, there's always going to be people that can come back and say, well, if a comment, you know, one comment throws you off, you were going to go anyway. You know, there's a lot of, there's always going to be people that say, shit like that but that's that's not my point my point is that it's not our place to tell anybody how they can recover because there's no wrong way to recover it it, it doesn't matter how people recover there's no right or wrong way to do it uh sorry y'all <laughs> It doesn't matter if you're working a 12-step program. It doesn't matter if you're doing abstinence only. It doesn't matter if you're doing a faith-based program. It doesn't matter if you're smoking weed. It doesn't matter if you're doing microdosing. It doesn't matter if you're working a maintenance program. It does not fucking matter what you are doing. The purpose of your recovery is that it's your recovery and that it works for you. That's the purpose of it. And... You know, it, speaking just for me, when I first got into recovery, <clears throat> I thought that abstinence only was the only way that I could recover. It was the only way that I could get out of my addiction and into the next phase of my life and be right. And I had limited knowledge at the time the only recovery pathway that I knew of at the time was Narcotics Anonymous. So when I started hearing about other recovery pathways and I turned to my sisters in Narcotics Anonymous and was like, can I do this? Can I do this? Can I do this? The answer was no. Well, you can, but you can't be a part of us anymore. And I will never, ever understand that. And I see it all the time. Um, I see it all the time in social, on social media. I see it all the time in real life. 
I've, I've seen women and men both in Narcotics Anonymous completely shut someone out because they chose a different pathway. I've seen them just do shitty things to people that are recovering differently than they are. I, I see it constantly. Comment sections on any social media platform are disgusting. Disgusting. But let me tell you something straight from the horse's mouth. People that are out there white knuckling their mental health and their recovery are not okay. We're not okay when we have to white knuckle those things. When we are just struggling and holding on for dear life day to day to survive because we have this group of people in our lives that tell us that it's not okay for us to take antidepressants, that it's not okay for us to take a maintenance medicine, that it's not okay for us to smoke weed to calm down our anxiety. That's not okay for you to tell other people that. That's not okay. It needs to be okay for people to have open and honest discussions about how they're feeling mentally, how they're feeling emotionally, and how they want to handle that. Now, from a family member's point of view, if you have a loved one that has just recently gotten into recovery, or they've been in recovery for years, whatever the case may be, and then you see them pick up a behavior or start a new behavior that scares you, like smoking weed, because that seems to be a big thing that family members get scared about. I understand that. I personally don't have a problem with people smoking weed. I don't smoke weed because I just waste it. I smoke weed and I fall asleep. So what's the point of me smoking weed? So I don't smoke weed. I don't care if other people smoke weed. If you're smoking weed, I want to stay away from you because I take drug tests for counseling and um, the clinic that I go to because I work a maintenance program. Newsflash. But personally, morally, whatever, do I care if you smoke weed? No, I don't care. I've never heard of anybody get ripped with their bong and going out and like robbing anybody or getting in their car and running over anybody. But that's a whole nother, y'all, I could go on and on about that. Anyway, I, I don't care if you smoke weed. If you are a family member, you have someone that you love or that you care about, whatever the case may be, they're in recovery and you see them start smoking weed and it concerns you. Instead of telling them that they are wrong, why don't you just sit them down, have a conversation with them and be like, look, this worries me. Talk to them. Be honest with them. Because they're going to respect that way more. You would want them to do the same to you. It goes back to the golden rule. I mean, God, I don't know what they teach kids in kindergarten now, but I know that when I went to kindergarten, when my daughter went to kindergarten, they were still teaching it. So I hope they're still teaching it, but it's the golden rule. You treat other people how you would want to be treated. So we need to remember that. And in this day and age, you don't see a lot of that anymore. You see people being keyboard warriors and getting all big and bad because they can hide behind their screen and people very rarely know who you are on the internet or whatever the case may be. But just stop and think for a minute. You know, it goes along with the same thing that I say when people film people that are in crisis. People love to film other people suffering and put it on the fucking internet. And I hate that. I hate that. That is one of my biggest friggin' pet peeves. Probably will be until the day I die. This stuff goes hand in hand. Leaving the negative comments on somebody's video when they're sharing their recovery pathway, their journey, whatever the case may be. Telling them in a face-to-face -face conversation or, you know, whatever the case may be. Whatever it is, the negative comments 
So that's why we are saying you can have that word sober because I know that I'm going to have plenty of people tell me, because I already do, tell me that I'm not sober because I work a maintenance program. It's none of your business. I want a very low dose of Suboxone. When I started at the clinic that I go to, I was very open and honest with them and told them, don't give me methadone. I love methadone. I'll abuse it. Not that it's any of your business. <clears throat> but you have to be honest with them. And I can tell you that the difference between me and active addiction and me working my maintenance program and working my recovery are worlds apart. Worlds apart. So if you think that I'm not sober and I'm not clean or whatever your word is, that's fine. I don't care. Like I said, and like I've said before, I have people tell me all the time that I'm a junkie, that I'm always going to be a junkie, that I'm always going to be a junkie, whatever the case may be. It doesn't bother me anymore because I know what I am and what I'm not. So you guys can have that word. I just ask that you, you practice a little bit of compassion because there are people out there in recovery at the beginning stages of their recovery or considering recovery that may not be as strong or as confident and overdoses, relapses. Let me say it this way. Relapses nowadays can take a life that quick because the shit that is on our streets now, the shit that people are out there using to dull their pain and to help them deal with whatever their trauma is, whatever it is that is going on inside of them that made them walk the path that they are walking, whatever put them in that place, whatever it is, we're not to judge. <sighs> that stuff is scary out there on the streets right now. Scary. And that is why I always tell people, please test your supplies. Get test strips. Please test your supplies. Never use alone. Carry Narcan. Please let me train you in Narcan. And while I will say that until I can no longer say that anymore. Because I would rather people be safe than be dead. Because you know the only people that cannot recover are people that are dead. That's the only people. It's how it does. It's not up to us to tell them the right or the wrong way to recover. It's not up to us at all. And recovery is not only abstinence. That's not it. There's a million, a million of freaking warm ways. There's kratom. There's maintenance. I mean, I've already said a bunch of them in this video. You guys don't need me to continue to say them. You know them. I had a, I had a guy or I had someone, I, I shouldn't assume your sex because I don't know if you're a man or a woman. So I'm sorry if you're watching this video because you are a subscriber of mine. We were talking about Kratom the other day uh, in, our, in our comment section on another one of my videos. And they were like, you know, I would not be able to work my recovery program if I didn't have Kratom. That's a life-saving thing right there. It gives them the pain relief that they need because they have other health situation going on and it helps them work their recovery program. It keeps them from taking a shitload of opiates and possibly, you know, not being here anymore. And it's Kratom. And from what they told me, I don't know a lot about Kratom. I've never used it. I'm researching it, but I haven't made a video about it because I don't want to give out misinformation. It's a friggin' plant. Like, uh, or a leaf or something like that. Anyway, well, I'll do a video about, about Kratom because I want to know about it and I want you guys to know about it. People are getting mad about that. Weed is a freaking plant. <laughs> I mean, y'all get mad about that, but you don't care that people go out and get so drunk they can't pee by themselves. Uh, anyway, I'm getting off topic. I'm getting off topic and I'm filming on my phone and I can't edit it because my microphone is still messed up. Anyway, so I don't want to get off topic. What I want to say to you guys is just have a little bit of compassion because speaking just for myself, 
not speaking for anybody else. My sobriety, because I am sober. And I won't argue with anybody about that. I will not. If you think that I'm not sober, that's fine. That's why I said you guys can take this word sober and you can have it because I don't want it anymore and I don't need it. My sobriety is about my health, my happiness. It's about what makes me whole and happy and healthy. It's about what allows me to heal in every way, shape, or form. And I mean, physically heal from what I did to myself and my addiction. Mentally heal from the trauma that I've gone through in my life. Emotionally heal from that trauma as well. That's what it is. That's what my sobriety means to me. That's what my sobriety and my recovery is. And when you shame and guilt people about the recovery pathway that they are on, that's what you take away from them. And we're not going to do that. We shouldn't be doing that to people. Okay? That's all I wanted to say. That's all I want to share with you guys. It is Friday. We're going to have a good weekend. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Be nice to each other. It takes like zero effort to be nice. So... If you're one of those people that sometimes leaves those comments telling people that they're not clean or they're not sober, please don't tell people they're not clean because it's just a gross comment to leave. Like, you don't know if people took a shower or not. Don't say that. If you're one of those people that leaves comments telling people that they're not sober because they work a different recovery pathway than you, please stop. Please stop. Okay? It's unnecessary. So... You guys know the drill. All my contact information is in my description box below. If you need Narcan or if you need to be trained in Narcan, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. You don't have to be in the same area that I am. I can do it over the phone, over video, anything like that. Um, I also have a new um, resource that I'm leaving in my description box. I'm not sure. I can't remember if I told you guys about it already, so I'm going to go ahead and tell you about it again. There is a new website that you can click on. It's a state locator, so you can go on no matter what state you're in. Just click on that website. It's next uh, nextdistro.org, and it will help you find free Narcan no matter what state you're in the United States. So I will leave that in the description box below. I love you guys. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other, and be nice to each other. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye.